Hello, this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net, and today is Thursday, the 10th of January, 2008. Uh, the market's closed. We did see uh, further upside here today, but after we got that initial weakness that we were looking for, so we'll take a look at the intraday uh, time frame in a moment. You can see we have a nice big green candle here with big volume once again. So last three days we've seen... Uh, you know, the biggest volume of this year, and uh, this is a 20-day moving average of volume down below. So you can see the volume has been increasing, and that's a good sign. It shows that we're starting to establish a little bit of support underneath this market. However, the, uh, the bigger picture is still uh, not quite turned higher yet. You can see here that this downtrend line and this declining five-day moving average on the 10-minute uh, time frame is still showing that the buyers haven't fully regained control yet, but there are good signs. Now, this level here is at about 143, really. 142.50 uh, to 142.75 is what I wrote on my blog earlier today when I was outlining this uh, inverted head and shoulders pattern that we started looking at yesterday. Maybe it still needs to come down a little bit. Test that five-day moving average near about 140.75. To me, that would be the ideal situation. What we're looking for today was a pullback towards about 140 or so uh, to see that level act as support. And you can see here that that 140 level did indeed act as support in here. Um, you know, initially we got that gap lower, but he recovered quickly, and then 140 did establish itself as support twice in here today. And you can see that uh, in relation to the daily, uh, the average price uh, of the spiders today, the market did finish higher. Average price over the last three days as well. We, we've seen all this big volume. This is a VWAP for the last three days. So the average price that this uh, S&P 500 has traded out over the last three days is 140.50. So that's a good sign. And maybe we see a pullback down towards uh, 140. Like I said, about 140.75, I think. But we do see, and you can, on this three-day chart, uh, this little pattern of higher highs and higher lows, uh, beginning to uh, uh, to. Uh, reveal itself to us and on that 10 minute time frame and actually we can see it probably a little bit better here on the um, uh, 30 minute time frame uh, first we've got this downtrend line that was broken but uh, it fell back below it we've got that five day moving average down here at about 140.75 uh, so hopefully that's the level that can prove to act as support if it does then i think you can look at uh, it, it building a, a real nice right shoulder in there if it were to get to that level and then we would be able to look for a move past this level let's just call it 143 to be safe uh, getting back above 143 could give us a pretty good p upside potential for ex options expiration next week that's about five points the height of this pattern and when we add that to the uh, 143 level that would give us an upward objective of about 148 uh, it seems like a long way off right now, but we're, if we take a look at uh, some Fibonacci and say, look at this uh, uh, decline, that's you know it, it would it would con it would constitute a reversal because a 61.8% uh, retracement would bring it up to here. So uh, if we get a move past this 143 level, don't automatically assume it's going to go straight to that 148. This gap area in here uh, is likely to uh, to be some uh, potential for resistance. And that's actually the level of, of prior support at 144. So, you know, for a move from 143 up to 144, I think you would expect a little bit of resistance there near that gap area. And then perhaps uh, near this um, 145 level where we see the two-thirds retracement but you know as we know markets don't go straight up they make a pattern of higher highs and higher lows so the ideal situation would be a pullback and then we begin to see if we could you know imagine that this is this is right here uh, some kind of pattern like this uh, up towards that 148 level uh, we'll see but for now the market is showing signs of uh, buyers getting a little bit more aggressive the best level of near-term support is just below that 140 level. Breaking back below that, then I think we've got uh, another uh, round of selling coming, and that would uh, give us a test very likely of this 137 level from the August lows. So there are encouraging signs, but be aware that, you know, because we do still see the declining 10, 20, 50, 100, and 200-day moving averages, that there's still a lot of risk in this market, and it's more of a trader's uh, environment. Uh, once again, the only thing that I took home overnight was uh, some call options on the queues. Everything else for me was uh, was day trades in there. And I had said earlier this morning that, uh, you know, I, I, I liked 
uh, technology stocks and that I was basically scared of the financials. I still am scared of the financials, but it's, uh, you know, rumors of, of maybe a deal for Countrywide sure sent this thing uh, rapidly higher in here today and caused, caused the shorts a lot of trouble. But the trend is still clearly lower in here. We get a lot of uh, rumors about uh, takeovers. Remember, uh, the, the big rumor back here for E-Trade was a takeover. And that stock has been almost cut in half since that rumor came out. It's okay to trade those, but you know they, these aren't confirmed reports, and it might be a take under. So just be careful. Semiconductors did finish with a slight loss here today, down 39 cents or 0.1 percent. So they're still in trouble. They're still you know a mess. Stay away from the semiconductors. There's no reason to be involved there. The IWM Russell 2000 looks like I've got a very bad uh, tick on that daily time frame. So we won't take a look at that. Uh, but we can see that this downtrend line has been broken on the 30-minute time frame, or rather the 60-minute time frame that we're looking at. This downtrend line has been broken. We do see higher lows. And the key level of resistance, of course, here is about that 73, 73 and a quarter level on, on the IWM. So Russell 2000 is still kind of healing. It's got a declining five-day moving average. I think a little more consolidation in here allows that five-day moving average to flatten out. And then we could see the potential for a build. What we were looking for today was a pullback. Uh, I said ideally down towards that $70 level. That's exactly where we did find support in here today. So the market was able to make a higher low and then these higher, uh, another higher low and higher highs. So this market is looking more encouraging as well. A break below 70 then I think uh, that the you know there's bigger problems once again. So I don't know what's wrong with that daily chart, but they'll uh, they'll get that cleaned up. I'm sure over at Realtek. Here's a look at the uh, daily chart of the IWM. You can see that $70 level was hit early on, and then it was uh, pretty much higher highs and higher lows in there uh, for the rest of the day. So the Russell 2000. Maybe we get a rally up towards 73, and then you know we could see a bigger pullback, and then maybe an inverted head and shoulders pattern uh, materialize out of that. Um, you know, I don't look for these head and shoulders patterns. I, when, when I see them, I like to point them out. Markets tend to reverse uh, like that a lot, and, and all it is is a series of lower highs and lower lows turning into higher uh, lows, and then taking out the resistance and making a higher high. So. If that were to occur, let's just call this 69 bucks a share up to 73, four points added to 73, would give us a target up near about $77 a share. And I was going to go to that daily time frame out of habit, but it, it doesn't look good. Uh, you know, the, we've got this big uh, mess on there. So, um, but that would give us a target up near about $77 a share, and I believe that's about where we have the 50-day uh, the moving average. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100. The Qs here, as I've been saying, uh, the, you know, the key level of resistance in here is about 48.50, and uh, you know, really 48.75 probably. Um, that's the key level. Uh, you can see the market did make it up towards about 48.45 today and found resistance there that it wasn't able to to, uh, to get through. We do still have that declining five-day moving average. We do still have this trend line to deal with. And realistically, this is the uh, the real area that this market's going to have to get above, 48.75. If it can get above 48.75, maybe it does so by rallying up to there, then pulling back and creating a right shoulder, and then... If that pattern were to materialize out of here, 46 and a half, up to 48.75, that's two and a quarter. That would give us a price objective near about $51 a share on the uh, Nasdaq, which would get us back above the, uh, you know, it would basically get us back up to about that 50-day moving average, and back above this level of, of support that was broken at 48 and a half, 48.75. So 48.75, I think, until the market can get and hold above that level, then all your long trades ought to be very short-term oriented. If you're looking for longer-term upside exposure, I think the proper way to do it, or at least what I'm doing, is doing it with call options. That way, if I'm wrong, the market gaps down or whatever, my, li my risk is absolutely defined to whatever I paid in premium for those options.